Hey guys, it's Jackie here, one of your teachers for graphic communication. What I'm going to be doing today with you guys is showing you some simple steps on how to produce your photo montage uh, for assessment to in graphic communication. There's uh, not many steps, you'll see that there's a couple of videos to follow after this one and I've broken them down into layers so that if you need to watch only a specific one, um, perhaps on shadow or adding people into your perspective, then uh, you can watch those ones individually rather than having to sit through and listen to a really long video. So let's get started. What we're going to do is file open and you can see straight away that I have created a folder on my desktop called graphic communication. And inside this, I've placed all my images that we're going to be using in the Photoshop exercise today. You can see that I've got a range of uh, different files. So I've got some JPEGs, I've got some PNGs, and at the top you'll notice the PDF. So I'm going, I'm going to open this. Um, unfortunately, sometimes your grid will open. Um, don't worry about that too much. We can easily take rid of it if we go view. And we, if we, you scroll down halfway down on the um, little box show, and just untick the grid part. So what you can see on here on the left hand side is the original image that we're going to be working with and the one on the right is what we're hoping to create in this tutorial or series of tutorials. So you can see that there's been a lot of changes so far. Um, you can notice the flooring that we've brought in a wooden texture rather than the tiles in the previous one and we've also used that same texture in the ceiling and manipulated the ceiling a little bit. We've also added in some uh, new signage, so the height on the left hand side and also two new uh, shop windows um, that you can see there. We've also added in uh, some human figures which are really important when you're doing this to make it look realistic. So you need to make sure that you establish that eye level and also insert them um, into the correct perspective and we've added a couple of uh, shadows there as well. Okay, so we're going to uh, set up our page size now. So if you head up to the top and you click on File, New, what it's going to do is it's going to open up a dialog box like this one. And what we're needing to do now is just put in some details so that we can set up our page size. So first of all, I want you to think about the size. Now we're going to set it to an A3 landscape page. If you're unsure of these dimensions, you can either jump onto the internet quickly and just type in what uh, the size of an A3 document is or, or have a look in some of the content in your resources for Graphcoms. So the width is 420 millimeters and the height is 297 millimeters. The next one that you really need to consider is your resolution. Remember that Chansey and I always make sure to tell you that it should be set to a high resolution. It stands for DPI, which is also known as dots per inch. So it's saying that every inch by inch uh, has 300 dots. So the more dots, the better quality that you're going to have. And it's always important that this is set to at least 300, especially if you're printing out any of your images. So make sure that you always save images from the net um, at a high resolution. And then you're going to click OK. Okay, so now that we have our uh, document in front of us, we need to make sure that we save it before we start any work. So head up to the top again and we're going to select File and down to Save As. This is going to bring up a new dialog box like this one. First of all, make sure you change the format uh, to a Photoshop PDF. Okay, we don't want anything else at the moment, just a Photoshop PDF. Then uh, head up to the top where it says Save As and make sure that you type in a name that you will remember um, just so you can come back to it if need be. So we're just going to uh, call it Graphic Communication for the moment for the sake of this exercise. And before you save it, just make sure that it's going into a folder with all your other examples and then click Save. It'll bring up this other dialog box. All you need to do is just click OK, nothing else to worry about. And then click Save PDF. Yes. Next step is to bring in all our images and textures. So we're going to click on File at the top and down to Open. This is going to bring up a new dialog box. You'll see straight away at the bottom the uh, document we just created. So click on the example above that and to select all the ones above it, hold down Shift and you can either click or you can use your up arrow to uh, select them all. So by clicking on open, what Photoshop is going to do is individually open these 
uh, files as their own separate file. So go ahead and click open. Okay, so you can see um, at the top that you have uh, probably a, a good 10 uh, files that have been opened and each of these have the names of those files that you uh, previously saved your images as. So you can have a uh, scroll through all your own images. So far this one that we have opened is our height image and you would have noticed um, at the very start of this tutorial that we use that on the left hand side um, of our new shop facade. The next one we've got a couple of people that we're going to be inserting. One of them is this lady and the other lady you would have seen previously. Uh, we are going to insert a man. Um, it's always good to have someone walking um, and this guy has been shopping so it's uh, a good indication of movement in your image as well. So have a couple of people. Uh, this image is our original image that we're going to uh, start with. So we're going to bring this image onto our white blank page that we started with um, and then gradually um, improve, improve the image. We're going to use that as the shop facade and then we're also going to use the YMC as the new signage uh, on, our, on our shop facade. We're going to use this wood texture on both the ceiling and the floor and then this uh, wood texture, the dark one, is going to be used on the other signage. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go back and find our original image and we're going to use the rectangular marquee tool to select the entire image. So if you click down and you drag it over the image, you'll see the marching ants on the outside and that has selected our image. So we're going to use Command C or Control C if you're on a PC to copy the whole selection. Otherwise you can go up to Edit um, and just go down to Copy and do it that way. You'll also see that you can go down and paste the same way, that which will be Command V or Control V as well. So now that we've done that, we're just going to copy our selection and we're going to go back to the graphic communication page and we're going to um, either go up to edit and paste our image in um, or just command V or control V. And you will have noticed that it's coming on a different layer. So what we want to do is we want to uh, double click on that layer to rename the file and what we are going to call it is just original image. It's always good to rename your layers so that you understand which, which layer is which and don't get confused. You will see that there is the eye icon next to it. If you click on it, it will disappear and uh, if it's visible, you will see your image. Also, you will have noticed that your background uh, layer is on a different layer and you'll see that it also is locked on the right hand side with the padlock. To uh, unlock this, all you need to do is to double click it and it will bring up a little dialog box and you can either rename your layer um, or you can just press OK for layer 0 and uh, this indicates that your layer is now unlocked. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is bring in a tool that's really handy to use um, on an image like this and it's called the Navigator and you can bring that in by simply going up to Window and Navigator is halfway down on the menu. So click on Navigator and it'll bring up a little box on the right hand side. Now the Navigator is really easy to use and what it does is it quickly gives you um, a zoom in and a zoom out of your image. You can also specifically request a certain percentage and so we've set this one uh, to 50% just so you can see what it looks like. Now the next step uh, is that we're going to be bringing in each of our individual images or textures and we're going to be doing that by simply going into those images and copying and pasting those into this graphic communication document. And what it's going to do is, as we did for this original image, it's going to create a series of layers on the right hand side under the two layers that we already have. Okay, so we're going to start by working on our first image, which is the hype shop. So we're going to press Command A to select everything and then Command C to copy. Then we want to close that file and we're going to come into this one and we're going to press Command V. So we'll notice that our layer has been uh, brought in on the right hand side underneath our original image. Now if we uh, click the icon off on the original image, we can see that the hype image is sitting directly underneath it. So at the moment it's just called layer 1 so we just want to call it 
pipe shop and that way it's easily identified. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing for each of our images. Okay, so you should have all your layers on the right hand side now um, and they should all be labelled correctly. Just go ahead at the moment and turn all those uh, layers off. We don't need to see them at the moment. Just make sure that we can see the original image. Also get rid of that uh, the final image that we'd opened up at the start. We don't need that open anymore so just close that. And that's it. Well done. You've finished the first tutorial and you've successfully brought in all your images and textures. So that's it for this tutorial. Uh, the next one we're going to uh, have a look at how to uh, work the flooring and the ceiling into our image.